Section 7.6 is percent applications. I can find markups, discounts, sales tax, and tips. A retailer buys items from manufacturers at wholesale prices. The retailer then sells those items to customers at retail prices. An increase from the wholesale price of an item to the retail price is a markup. The markup is calculated using a percent of the wholesale price. So to find markup is, so markup is, percent of times wholesale price. Okay. A street vendor buys bracelets from a manufacturer for $7 each. The vendor marks up the price by 150%. What is the retail price? So to find the retail price, uh, the street vendor is going to make us pay the original $7. Okay. Street vendor bought it for $7. We're going to have to pay that original $7. There's two different ways we could do this problem here. Uh, and they're going to mark up the price by 150% because they want to make money off this deal. So they're going to take 150% of the wholesale, wholesale price, percent of the wholesale price. And that wholesale price here is $7. Uh, to get rid of our percent sign, we move away from our percent sign because we don't want it anymore. Two places. This is going to give me 1050 plus that original $7 because we have to pay what they paid as well. Uh, and then the 1050 is the extra, the markup. So the retail price then is going to be 1750. Okay, we could also do this by thinking about it in terms of the percents. So we're going to have to take the amount of money that they paid. And we're going to have to pay 100% of that. We're going to have to pay for the entire amount of money that they spent. They're also going to make us pay 150% extra. Okay, this is the amount of money they spent, and now they want to make this much more. So we can go ahead and add our percents. 100 plus 150 is 250. We can get rid of our percent sign by moving away from the percent sign two places. 7 times 2.5 is also going to get us to 1750. So either way, uh, we can multiply by our percent and then add our totals. This is our markup dollars uh, plus the original and add up our dollar amounts. Or we can add up our percents first and then multiply by our dollar amount. Either way works. Feel free to pause here and give this one a try if you'd like. In example one, what is the retail price of a bracelet if the markup percent is $120%? So same idea here. We can either find our costs, the amount that we have to pay for the bracelet plus the amount of the markup. And the markup percent is 120%. And that's of our original amount. When we multiply here, first we have to get rid of our percent sign. So to do that, we move our decimal away from that percent sign. And we get $8.40. Combine those, and we get $15.40. So we can think about it as the whole amount that we have to pay to start off with plus the extra. Or we can think about this as the dollar amount spent we're going to pay 100% of that. We're going to pay the entire amount that they paid. Plus, they want to charge us an extra 120% so that they can make some profit off that. Uh, add them up when we get 220% times 7. To get rid of our percent, we move our decimal two spots away. If we take 7 times 2.2, we get to 1540 as well. So here are two ways, guys. You don't need to do them both, just one, but I wanted to keep showing you here so you can find whichever one you're more comfortable with. A decrease from the original price of an item to the sales price is a discount. The discount is calculated using a percent of the original price. In example two, it says you buy an electronic organizer that is on sale for 15% off the original price of $25. What is the sale price? So here, this one's just a little bit different. We have a sale, which means we're not adding on more. When we find a discount, uh, it's 
less. So we're going to subtract. It's a decrease from the original amount. So we start off with $25. And instead of adding a markup, we're going to subtract a discount. And that discount is 15% off the original price. So we're going to take 15% times that original price. Get rid of our percent. We move two places. We multiply first, and then we take our whole amount minus our discount. This part right here is our discount, and we get $21.25. We could also use percents here uh, and do the math with those first. So we could take our original amount, and to start off with, we're going to pay 100% of that. But we have a 15% off. So we're going to subtract, because we're decreasing and going down, that 25%, uh, 15%, sorry. This is a 15% right here, which is going to be 25 times 85%. Get rid of our percent sign, two places. 25 times 0.85 is also going to give us 21.25. So just like we did with the markups, guys, it doesn't matter which one of these methods you use. Um, they'll get you to the same place, so whichever one you're more comfortable with. I'm partial to this one personally, um, but it's really up to you. Example three here. The bill for your restaurant meal is $22. We leave a 15% tip. The sales tax is 6%. What is the total cost of our meal? So we have to pay for our meal. We also leave a 15% tip, and that's going to be 15% of, so times, that meal cost. And with a tip, we add that on top of it. Okay, that's an additional um, thing bottom line that we leave for our server, our waitress, whoever helped us. A sales tax is 6%, so we're going to take 6% of that amount too, and we're going to add on the tax. Taxes are an additional amount we have to pay there. So my total cost for my meal is going to be the $22 that my meal was charged. We're going to get rid of our percent sign here, two places. 330. Get rid of our percent sign here. Two places, don't forget that zero there, 0 0.06 times 22, which is 132. Now we're going to take our food cost and our tip and our tax, add all these together, we get 26.62. This one we can do the same way as we have been. We can take our meal cost. We have to take 100% of our meal cost. We're going to add on an additional 15% for our tip, and we're going to add on 6% for tax, which means we're actually paying 121% of our uh, food price. I'm going to get rid of that percent sign, two decimal places. So it's going to be 22 times 1.21 which is also going to give us 26.62 here. So again, doesn't matter which way we do. If we find our total amounts and then add them up, or if we find our total percent and then multiply, uh, we'll still get to the same answer. A pair of jeans that originally cost $42 is 25% off. Find the sales price. So same idea here. Go ahead and give this a try if you'd like. So it originally cost $42, and it's on sale. It's 25% off. So we're going to subtract 25% of that $42. Get rid of our percent by moving two places. Multiply first, 0.25 times 42 gives me 1050. And this is our discount amount. To find our sales price, we have to subtract that from our original. We have to take that away. And we get 3150. Same idea here. We're going to take our original amount. Start off with 100%, the entire thing, and we're going to take off 25% because we're not paying that because it's a discount. 
which means the amount of money that we are paying is 75%. Get rid of our percent sign, move two places to get rid of, uh, to convert it to a decimal. And I'm going to get 31.50 here. Find the total cost. If a meal costs $28, you leave an 18% tip and the sales tax is 5%. So it's $28 plus our tip amount is 18% of that meal cost. And our tax is 5% of that meal cost, that $28. So our food was 28. Here we move two decimal places. And multiply, and we get 504. Here, get rid of our percent, move two places. 0 0.05 times 28 is going to give me 140. So I have my food, my tip, my tax. And to find my total here, for total cost, I'm going to add up all my costs. And I'm going to get 34.44. Again, we also could have said, okay, we're going to take our meal cost. I'm going to pay all of that. And I'm going to pay 18% for a tip. And I'm going to pay 5% for a tax. Which really means that, I'm, that out of that $28, I'm actually paying 123%. So to get rid of our percent sign, two decimal places, and when I multiply here, I also get 34.44. So again, doesn't matter which method. Example four is a little bit different. It says, a furniture store marks up the wholesale price of a desk lamp by 80%. Here it gives us the retail price, and we want to know what is the wholesale price. So remember, um, to find the markup, okay, we had two ways of doing it. The way that's going to be helpful here, or the most helpful, is by using our combination of the percents first. So usually we take our wholesale price times 100% plus our markup percent equals our retail price. And if we look here, we're looking for the wholesale price. That makes that my variable. My markup percent here is 80%, and my retail price is $35. I can add up my percents now and get 180%. Again, before we can move from one side to the other, we have to completely simplify. So I have x times 180 equals 35. To get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 1.8 and x is going to give me 19.44. Does that answer seem reasonable? Yeah, we want the wholesale price, which means it should be less than our retail price. Same idea here. A store marks up the wholesale price of a printer by 80%. So we know that it's going to be 100% plus 80%, or 180%. The retail price is $120. And we want to know the wholesale price. And we know that we multiply the wholesale price by our percent. So to get rid of our percent, we move two places. Okay, uh, to get rid of the multiplication, we divide. And x here is going to be $66.67. So again, just take a second to think, um, what am I looking for here? Here I'm looking for the wholesale price. That's this part right here, the thing that we multiply by our markup percent and our 100%. Uh, and then double check, does my answer make sense? We want the wholesale price of the printer, uh, which means it should be less than our retail price. And they're only marking it up by 80%, which means it should be a little bit more than half of the cost. And that matches up here. So that's all I have for section 7.6.